All right. <clears throat> Welcome to Art Appreciation 1301 uh, online. Um, thank you for taking this course. Um, I'm your professor, John Taylor. Um, I put my middle name in there, John Alexander Taylor, on the sheet. That's my artist name. I am a working artist as well as a professor uh, for Dallas, Texas, if you're not in the area. Uh, I also teach at Cedar Valley, if you're taking the course here from Cedar Valley. Um, and, uh, anyway, well, welcome to my course. If you've taken an online course in the past, my course is a little different. Uh, hopefully you enjoy my layout. Hopefully you enjoy what I do. Um, there's some pluses to this course, and there's some minuses to this course. Uh, let's start with the pluses. First thing in the plus that everyone asks me in my courses, <clears throat> do I need to have a book? The answer is no. You do not need a book. And that, that should make you a little happy. You don't have to read chapters. Now, the minus. You must watch my videos. Please do not miss my videos because you will not understand the information for the quizzes and midterms and tests and you will not do well in the course. My videos um, they range from some of them can be an hour, some of them can be two hours, some of them can be three hours. Um, I try to keep them at a three to four hour increment before I give you a quiz. Alright, so if you get a quick video, know that there's no quiz after that video. Um, so, I'll break down all that in just a moment. Um, a little bit about myself. Um, I've been teaching this class, uh, this coming up 2017. It'll be my 10th year of teaching art appreciation. I love this class. I'm very passionate about art. And you will hear that in my videos. Um, I kind of feel like sometimes I'm a borderline comedian in some of them, so hopefully I might make you laugh. Depends on your sense of humor. Um, I try to tell you interesting stories about the artist. I try to make this class as fun as possible. Um, I will try not to have a monotone voice. You might already think I do. Um, but I will definitely try to make this fun. I will show you art that you've never seen, or that art you have seen, but you never understood. That is a goal of mine, that when you're watching TV shows or movies, and you might see in the background an art piece that I've talked about. And I find that students find that very interesting and cool, that they now kind of understand and see things in a whole different world. But the way this works in this class, it's real simple. You watch the video, take notes. I will illustrate times in my, in my PowerPoints that you must write this down. It will be a guide for you to write it down. If I put down a text information, and you can tell that I've broken it down a little further than just the artist name and title, uh, most likely that's going to be on a quiz or a test. So write it down. Um, you do want to keep your notes. Now, the way I'm going to do this, uh, when you take your quizzes, you have two chances to get a hundred on your quiz. I will not give you unlimited testing because the reason is I want you to watch the videos, alright? You don't have to read anything. I don't want to fail anybody. I want, to, I want people to get a lot out of the class. But at the same time, I don't want you to take advantage of the situation online. So, I'm not a mean person by any stretch of the imagination. And I love what I do. I love to teach. I get up every morning happy to do what I do. All right. So, on that note, all right, I want to start getting into this 
uh, course and see how you feel. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to contact me. All right. Now, on Blackboard, I will put my personal number. I do work best off of text messages. If you do contact me, please let me know that you're in my online class. I do teach art appreciation at other times, and it could be a little confusing if I don't know which class you're in and what question you might have that pertains for each section. My face-to-face -face class is totally different than this course, but I try to keep it very similar. And just to let you know, on average, my retention, my students that take this course, I have a 90% retention rate. That means that most people who take my course continue to take another course from me. You might be one of those people. I do teach at Cedar Valley College. I also teach at Southeast Tarrant. I also teach at SMU. I also teach at TCU. Uh, depends on when you hear this video. Um, but at that point, uh, I will get more involved in what I teach and how I teach. Um, I love to teach. Um, and I love to make art. My art, I'm a muralist. I'm a graffitiist. Some people might call that. Uh, I do murals inside, outside, inside, on the side of a building, on the street. <laughs> so it depends on the commission. Um, uh, I do have uh, two children. Sometimes they come out in my stories. I have a lovely wife. We've been together, and you might hear a story about us talking. Um, and we've been together this year will be our 20th year uh, we're high school sweethearts so some of you might be like oh gross um, but I do love my wife dearly so you you'll see that in some of my in some of my videos if you do like my personality and you like what you hear and you want to get more involved into my art scene uh, feel free to just Google search John Alexander Taylor you can see on Google all about my art. Uh, I do have a blog page. Uh, I'm working on my website right now and take it I just took it down. And if you want to friend me on Facebook, feel free. Um, I do take people that I've never met before that are fans of my art. Um, I would hope to get to meet you in person if you're on my online course, but if I never meet you, well then that'd be fine. Uh, but you can still friend me. I'm fine with that. All right. Now Here's the layout, okay? This is how the course goes down, all right? All right, you have basically, for this section, I have what is art, okay? That is today, we're just talking about what is art. Next thing we're going to be talking about is technologies of art, principles of design. Uh, pro, uh, we're going to talk about proportions and, and composition and... Um, and we're going to basically end it there for your first quiz. Uh, your quizzes, I range them every year. Uh, sometimes I put 20, 30 questions for a big section. Sometimes I might just do 10 questions. It varies. It also depends on how much information is being told to you. At the beginning, you can guarantee it's going to be a little heavy. It's a lot of documentations, text, um, definitions. Write these down, okay? Then I'm going to go into color theory, impressionist and post-impressionist, quiz number two. Then I'm going to go into pop art, and that's a big section. So, quiz number three. Um, then we're going to go into 1940s uh, and 30s artists during World War II, basically, the World War II artists and World War I, and we're going to talk about them, and then we're going to go into quiz number four. Then at this point, I'm going to put into the midterm, all right? Then from there, after the midterm, it's going to be printmaking and then quiz number five. That should probably be a small quiz, just to let you know. Um, and then I have two local artists, Linda Ridgway, Sean Smith, and then that'll be quiz number six. Um, I have sculpture next, and then that's quiz number seven. I got woman's art. I focus a whole semester 
only or just a whole section just on women artists because your book only covers about 23 percent if you got a book but we're not using a book so but just know on the average most books are about 23 percent covering of women in art history and I don't think that's enough so I focus a little bit more for women's art and then you'll have a little quiz after that um, and then there'll be Leonardo and Raphael, Michelangelo and Donatello. I focus on the on the great Renaissance, and we're going to be talking a little bit about the Renaissance today. Um, and I leave the Renaissance for the end because that's what most people want to hear, and at the end it works out best um, for you guys, and it kind of ties everything together from the beginning to the end. And that'll be your quiz nine. So that means you have nine quizzes. All right. The more quizzes I put in, the, the better chances of your grades to be A's, even if you mess up. Okay, on a quiz, don't freak out. All right. Then there will be a final. All right. After that, and then on top of this, okay, I would like you to write a artist review. Okay. What does this mean? Well, this means I would like you to see some kind of performance. It could be a music performance. It could be a theater performance. It could be um, an art show. It could be um, anything that you feel, okay, that has something to do with the with the category what is art okay and you'll learn today what is art and I'd like you to write a paper on that alright I'll give you uh, in blackboard a kind of a guide to set up and basically you just fill in the blanks and I don't care about like say if you go see something at, at a museum and it's Vincent Van Gogh I don't care about the day he was born when he was born all I care about is um, what you got out of it. I want to get your impression of the art, okay? I want to get your input, review, okay? Pretend like we're at Starbucks sitting at a table talking uh, about art after seeing an art show, all right? You might like the art. You might hate the art, okay? Um, I want to also know, did the people at the place treat you nice? Did they uh, insult you? Because I've had that happen where students walk into a gallery and Someone gets insulted. Do you have to spend money to go to some of these things? No. Most art, local art galleries are free. And at the first Friday of the month or Saturday of the month, you have to look on their website. Uh, they do art shows where you actually can meet the artist and, and ask them questions about their art. Um, highly recommend you doing that because it also gives you a little insight. Uh, you will actually see some artist talks, okay, with Linda Ridgway, especially Sean Smith. Um, uh, when we get to that section, uh, maybe you might even get to see one of their shows if you're so lucky. All right. Now, um, I would like you to write a review. Give me an idea. Um, it should be your paper should be about. I don't want to read a whole bunch of papers, uh, to be honest, uh, in depth. Um, so. A page, page and a half, maybe, uh, four paragraphs, five paragraphs, six, maybe. So ju I just want to get the feeling about what you saw, okay? You fill in the blanks, write it out, I'll read it, grade it. And what you're going to learn is generally I'm a very easy grader, okay? Um, basically, I just want to make sure you understand the material, you do well, you love this class, and you want to take more art classes. That's the goal of this class. Now, do I know that most of you are not going to be artists? Yes. Okay, most of you are business majors, majority. Uh, so, if, if that's your category and you're just taking this to get that art credit, boom, done, out of the way, great. Uh, this should be a fun class, easy for you. You'll get your art you'll be done, you'll be happy, and you'll get your A, all right? But if you don't work hard on this class, you slack off, wait to the last minute, do it at the end, you're going to fail, okay? There's no way you're going to pass this. So I plan that almost during a 16-week course, you should spend three hours a week on the videos. Now, if you're taking this as a May term class, or a summer one, or summer two, or even a uh, winter term course, um, know that you are an accelerated block. It will take time. 
don't think that it's an online class this is going to be easier all right I do treat this just like my regular classes all right can you skip through portions sure you can skip through this part I'm talking about and just go straight into the meat and potatoes but you're gonna miss some of the fun parts and you never know I might just throw a quiz question in there that you might have to then go find back and listen and and get it again um, on that note alright let's start alright first thing what is art okay what is art a lot of people uh, ask me this as an art teacher they're like oh you're an art teacher and they try to be clever and they say to me what is art well art is a lot of things alright it's not just pretty pictures in a gallery okay when I want you to think if you have a friend or it could be yourself um, and they t and somebody hears you doing or sees you doing something artistic and they go wow you're an artist okay when you what do you do that makes you an artist well it could be a couple things um, it could be that you're a musician it could be that you are a literature person and you write really wonderful um, uh, you could be an actor okay or an actress alright uh, you could be uh, a visual artist alright or my favorite I also I love to dance uh, you might be a dancer okay and it might be a bad dancer, it might be a good dancer, it might be a break dancer, but that's still in the arts. It's an art form. When it's any way that you can express enthusiasm for the arts, okay? And those top five categories music, dance, theater, visual art, and literature, okay? If you can touch any of those art forms in your own life, in your own personality, that's art, all right? So when someone's asking me what is art, well, it's a lot of things. Okay, there's not just one answer. And then some people go, well, how do you know that's art? All right, well, that's a good question. How do you know that's art? Okay, someone's break dancing. Okay, in the in the 80s, and people are like, that's not really dancing. Okay, well, as time has come across, it's become more acceptable, and that's the big thing. Is a lot of time it's time, and you'll find out that as we go through. People accept certain arts all right so <clears throat> five types of art you just need to know those I'm gonna break them down pretty soon here okay now but there's more to the arts than just being talented all right talent has a huge portion to go all the way but it's not the only way that makes you an artist all right um, first of all the one thing about art uh, and as someone who is an artist, artists have a tough life. There's no denying that. All right, they. Um, you've heard starving artists. Okay, you've heard musicians on, that are at bars and country clubs, and then they get on American Idol, and then they become this mega star afterward. And they were just a nobody beforehand. Okay, um, the one thing about an artist. They wake up in the morning looking to do their art. All right? You eat, breathe, drink, think art all the time. All right? That, to me, is what I consider an artist. Okay? Now, um, are there people that do art that aren't artists? Sure. That's, that's more of a hobby and a passion. Okay? But could they become famous? Yes. They just have to put in the work. All right? Um... Some people work really hard the whole their whole life and never get the recognition of an artist until they die. Vincent Van Gogh is one of those people. We all know of him. We've heard the name, I'm sure. All right, but he never got his recognition uh, while he's alive. And I'll illustrate that in our videos. Um, now, um, but. To become an artist, okay, and you're in college, and if you want to become an artist, this is the steps, okay. You go to grade school, you learn a little bit of art. You go to high school, you learn a little bit more, all right. And this goes for all all the genres, all right. Then you go to college, 
and you do a little bit of a focus and concentration on that one specific art that you like. All right. Then you get your degree in that art, and then you go to get your master's. All right. Once you become a master, you can become a teacher, like myself. All right. And a lot of artists stop at that moment. All right. You can get a doctorate in some art forms. Okay. If you're an art historian, sure, that's a great one for you. Um, but I choose not to get my doctorate because uh, my degree is at actually the highest it can be. All right. Now, at this moment, all right. Um, this whole section I just set, went through for an academic part. How did this start? Well, it started in the Renaissance, okay? And the Renaissance, when they were thinking about what is art, well, it basically boiled down to this. Um, there were elite people, okay, that had no formal upbringing of any sort of education. Uh, your typical farmers, so to speak. Now, when you look at Michelangelo, Raphael, Donatello, Leonardo, none of those great artists, besides being the Ninja Turtles, that every time I say that, people think Ninja Turtles, but they were the Renaissance artists, if you're a fan of that uh, comic. Um, none of them came from wealthy upbringing. All right? Most of their parents were farmers, um, and they had no sense of education. Uh, they had a skill and a talent that was uh, captured early on. Um, Leonardo was sought after being an artist at the age of at five and six. Okay, so it was Michelangelo and Raphael, but Donatello was not. Uh, Donatello set up the art movement that we now consider the Renaissance. All right, and his belief, and he would love community colleges. He would love this online section here, even. He believes that everybody deserves an education, and he says everyone deserves an education at a young age. So, if you think about when kids go to school, they're at the ages of five, uh, four, and five years of age. Then they start kindergarten, they go all the way to eighth grade, then they go into high school, and then they go into get their bachelor's, and then they go get their master's. And that right there is what he set up in the Renaissance. But in the Renaissance, you learned a little bit differently. Every Renaissance artist must learn to read and write, must be able to um, uh, at least perform two to three of these types of art I'm talking about. So uh, Michelangelo was a wonderful musician, okay? Besides being a, a sculptor, he was also an inventor, all right? Um, Leonardo was also a wonderful uh, musician, and he was also an inventor as well. Raphael was a wonderful writer, and on top of that, uh, he was a wonderful uh, painter as well. And all of them were wonderful painters. But Raphael, to my ability, my thinking, I think he's the best out of all the, the writing and painting out of the group. Um, now, Donatello was the smartest one in the group. He was the philosopher, all right? He believed that there was more to humanity than what people were giving credit to at that time. Now, in 2016, 17 ish time, um, Donatello would love what he's seeing in, in this decades here. Um, so, on that note, let's start talking about the sections here. All right, so let's go down one. All right, so here we go. We got music. Music's the next part. Now, the way I break this down is there are videos on the right. You see right there, nothing but strings. All right. Great young group of guys, super talented. All right. Now, in my PowerPoints, I just click on the video um, when I'm at lecture in class. For you guys, you have to go down. I should have in Blackboard this video set up, and then there should be a link or a video box. Click on that. You can click on it and pause this at any moment all right to watch their video um, or you can wait to the end it's up to you um, either way uh, but I would watch them because they're kinda they're they're different they're neat and they're about three minutes long each video so okay so but let me break this these guys uh, down for you guys 
Now, <clears throat> um, first off, uh, you might have recognized them from uh, America's Got Talent. Uh, I think they were, uh, I think it was season five or six, I can't remember. Uh, they got to second place. Now, I've been a fan of these gentlemen since, uh, I would say, 2004 time, okay? So, I've been a huge fan for, for all over a decade <laughs> and I've been showing them for my class um, for over 10 years and um, some people have never seen them some people have um, what they are, are violinists uh, that take their violin and they push it all right they put a contemporary pop sound to classic music uh, Chopin is who they're copying in this video called Thunder down below now a little bit of backstory. They're from um, they're from Harlem. Um, there are two uh, brothers that basically uh, went to a local school, found out that they're gifted in the violin, and the oldest one, the one on the left, uh, he decided that he was going to apply to Juilliard uh, for the violin, and he got in. Okay, and then. Um, he was known at that point to be the youngest African American to ever go to Juilliard, and um, and then they found out about his brother, who was two years younger than him, and they put his brother in, and his brother got in <laughs> uh, the next year, and at that point, then his brother was the youngest. So um, now, how did they get their popularity? Well, of course, they made their popularity on. America's Got Talent, uh, but before that, Jay Leno had a scouting agent that actually heard them on a New York subway. Now, they would go up and down the subway system in New York, and, and they would play, just perform, and when they would perform, they'd make a little extra money. Now, they have a mom, and she's a single mom, and for them to do what they're doing in the music industry, it's kind of tough, and so she took a lot of sacrifice to buy these lovely violins, and, vi and a violinist, that's a very expensive uh, passion to become part of, and they would actually raise money to help their mom pay rent uh, by doing the subway. And they got spotted by a scouting agent. And then from there, the career started. They got a record deal. And I think they've come out with like five records so far. Um, uh, and since then, there's been more people copying their style. There's a really uh, popular lady, Lindsay. can't think of Lindsay's last name. But... I'm sure you've heard sounds just like her, and she was on, I think, America's Got Talent, British style, on the British one, Mer or British Got Talent. I think that's where she made her start, if I'm not mistaken. But <clears throat> one of the things about them is they take Chopin, okay, which is a beautiful composer, and they take his sounds, and then they take their talent of pop music and and they intermingle the two. And now I'm going to be using this term called piggybacking. And they piggyback off of one another in these videos. All right. And so when an artist piggybacks off of another artist, what they are doing is they're taking something that's already a successful idea or a successful movement, and they're taking their talent and adding it on top. When you do these things, it basically guarantees success. You know one step of it's already going to be successful because there's some people that already love it. But then there, then when you add this new spin, you're actually taking your interpretation and adding it to it. And musicians do this all the time with covers of music. They hear a wonderful song. They already know it's successful because it's such a strong cover, but they put their own interpretation on it. And sometimes people love it more. Sometimes they love it less. It just depends on the type of sound and music you like. So I can give you a moment here while I switch over. Uh, to, if you want to pause it right now, you can pause it and go to the next and watch the video below. Okay, so you came back. I hope maybe you watched it. Maybe you're going to wait till the end. 
Okay, obulus. Okay, this is dance. All right. Now, how do I show dance? The, this one, there's a lot of dance movements. I just really like this because they take silhouettes of human form and they make shapes and visual elements from their bodies. Um, now, this is a huge theater group. Um, ten years ago, they weren't so known. Uh, they've become more and more popular in the last ten years while I've been teaching. Uh, you might have seen stuff like this also on America's Got Talent from other uh, theater groups that are copying them. But they're the original, original people doing this. Um, and... I really love the way that they use the shadow silhouette with con uh, the contrast of colors, and they bring more to the story than just uh, dance. It's it it basically really illustrates as as you're watching the video, and um, their tickets are very affordable. If you ever get a chance to see them in person, they're spectacular. I highly recommend you see them, um, and. Basically, on that, um, I love the way that they are um, taking visual with uh, expression. All right. So I'm going to pause this one. So pause it now if you want. And I go to the next one. Performance art. Art theater. Now, I could have pulled a theater uh, piece for you guys to see, but... I focus mostly on the visual art element in this lesson plans, all right? So, <clears throat> um, for theater, uh, yeah, I could have put up anything that's popular right now. Cats has always been a popular Broadway theater. Um, Hamilton is the biggest one right now. I could have found a skit off of Hamilton and put it in here, but... I like this guy. I think this guy is a little bit different, a little bit out of the ordinary. Um, hopefully you guys think this is kind of interesting. Um, what this gentleman does is he basically plays a song and he paints as fast as he can within this song. And he makes a beautiful uh, painting of... of the illustration of the song. So this one I put out for you is by Ray Charles. Okay, so uh, you're gonna hear a lot of Ray Charles music. I always feel it's pretty timeless kind of a uh, uh, artist to uh, portray in his painting. And when you watch it, I love that moment when I, my students watch it and they see the painting come to life and everybody kind of claps in, in the classroom. So it's a really good film. Um, now, uh, where does he get his? He tours all over the United States, but his home is in Vegas. So if you'd like to see him, he lives in Vegas and he performs, I think, almost every night in Vegas. And he makes a good living doing his paintings. Um, and so his name is Paint Jam, it's the group. Um, and it's just him, it's a one person uh, performance. And his shows, he usually does about 10 paintings a night, um, sells each painting for about 50 to 60 grand. So on top of the ticket sales, he does very well for himself and people do buy his work. All right. Um, and so anyway, pause it now. All right. Let's go to the next one. Now visual art. Um, we're going to see tons of visual art. This is what this whole class is mostly about. Um, but there's sometimes I'll be talking about a space, and it's a little bit trickier to f see the visual art. Um, because, like the Sistine Chapel, all right? It's on the ceiling, all right? And there's photographs of it, and it looks okay. But I really like when I find videos that are 360-degree views where you can move your cursor around and you can see uh, the Sistine Chapel like you're really there. Uh, the Vatican came out with this uh, program about six years ago, and I really love it. And so it allows you, the viewer, to actually see the space in its entirety, and to kind of get a feel what it feels like. Now, um, in the Sistine Chapel, this is a Michelangelo piece, all right? We'll get into that when we get to the Renaissance. Now, <clears throat> when we get to the Sistine Chapel, you hear me say this again. It's Sistine, not 16. There weren't 15 chapels before this chapel, okay? <laughs> um, 
because people say that to me all the time. Uh, they'll put down the 16th chapel in a quiz or test. If you do that, it will be wrong. <laughs> okay. Um, Justin Bieber even said in an in a interview with Letterman, type it in if you want to see it, it's pretty funny, and Letterman lights him up in this because of his ignorance. All right, He went to the Sistine Chapel, and he didn't look at it like most people do. He's just kind of like, oh, wow, well, that's neat. And, and he said, yeah, I went to the Sistine Chapel. And Letterman's like, did you go to the 15th Chapel? Sure, yeah. And so he just made him look like an idiot on that chair. So some people thought it was mean, but at the same time, if you're going to act like you've seen something, know what you've seen, okay? Um, especially something so knowledgeable as the Sistine Chapel. All right, so pause it, check it out if you'd like. All right, come back. All right, here we go. Next one. All right, <clears throat> writing and poems and novels, etc. Okay, this is the literature portion of the class. Okay, for that. Okay, now this was actually kind of tricky to show you videos of popular literature. I could have put something out or told you to read this passage of some artist or some author. Um, instead, what I did is I tried to find videos for you guys to watch. Now, uh, the Marvels is a book that just came out last year, um, uh, if it's close to 2017, um, because I don't know how long this video is going to last. Um, uh, so the Marvels, I like this intro, um, and it basically is a way to get kids involved in reading, uh, books, uh, with a visual, like, preview basically and it's all hand drawn simple animation uh really kind of lovely um if you've seen hugo's closet uh or hugo uh by scorsese um he did a version of 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 this author's book um and it's called a hugo it's hugo's cabinet sorry not closet um and that's a really good book. I read that to my daughter, and we just finished reading this one to my daughter, and we love this book. It's a great imaginative book. If you have children, a lot of my stuff is great for children to see, all right? Especially when you go to art museums. Take your kids to the museum, okay? It's good for kids to kind of get grown up and seeing art, all right? Now, the other one over there is uh, Typolution. Uh, this one is going with kind of social satire of pollution with our environment, um, and it's done with kind of a quirky video that kind of, um, it's all done with type, and uh, with H's and Q's and letters are turned into butterflies and, and trees uh, with Y's. It's, it's a neat little video, and it's got a good soundtrack to it. Um, a lot of people enjoy the energy that this one gives. Then the last one is love letters. It's got a lady in the image, and these letters fall from the sky. And she uh, collects all the letters from the sky, and then she brushes them around. And as she brushes them around, they become uh, a gigantic heart. And uh, I, th I found it just kind of like if I was going to look at a poem in motion that's how i kind of feel this one has so the first one's more of a novel the second one i talked about type pollution is more of a kind of a poppy kind of a music video kind of a sound uh with letters and the other one's kind of a poem all right so anyway um on that note welcome to the class um Next, I'd like you to click on to the uh, Technologies of Art, and I'm going to give you a broad overview of what this class offers. All right. See you in the next video.